So, Mr. Scarpaleggio, seconded by Mr. Ellis, moves that the Standing Committee on Environment and Sustainable Development be instructed to undertake a comprehensive study of federal policies and legislation relating to freshwater and more specific, specifically focusing on les principaux éléments législatifs de la politique fédérale. The key legislative instruments of federal freshwater policy, including but not limited to the Canada Water Act, the Fisheries Act, the Migratory Birds Convention Act, the Canadian Navigable Waters Act, the Canadian Environmental Protection Act, 1999, and the Impact Assessment Act. The key organizational components of the federal freshwater policy, including but not limited to Environment Canada, Fisheries and Oceans Canada, Health Canada, Natural Resources Canada, Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, Infrastructure Canada, Transport Canada, Public Safety Canada, Crown Indigenous Relations and Northern Affairs Canada, Indigenous Services Canada, and Global Affairs Canada. The relationship between the federal government and the provinces, territories, indigenous peoples and local governments relating to freshwater protection and management, Ver D, various international treaties governing Canada's freshwater interests and obligations, E, present and future research needs relating to freshwater management and protection, F, the pressures on Canada's freshwater resources, including with respect to climate change, flooding and drought, and G, la création. The creation of a Canada Water Agency and that the committee, one, begin its study no later than 30 days after the adoption of this motion, two, schedule no fewer than 10 meetings, three, report its findings and recommendations to the House within one year following the adoption of this motion. Debate. The Honourable Member for La Salle. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today to call on the House to send a clear signal that it's time to launch a deep and nonpartisan study into uh, all of our freshwater policies. Water is the ultimate responsibility of the provinces, and I've always been interested in this issue. It's always hard to understand why. One matter interests us more than another, but in my case, it may be because my riding of Lac Saint Louis, Lac Saint Louis, is surrounded on three sides by major waterways: the Saint Lawrence, Saint Lawrence River, the Rivière des Prairies on the north, and the Rivière des Deux Montagnes, which is the end of the Ottawa River to the west. When I came to Parliament. I discovered to my surprise that we weren't talking about water or the federal governments in protecting our resource, which is by far our most precious resource. Uh, we were barely talking about climate change when I came to Parliament. But the real, where the shoe pinches when it comes to climate change is water. Of course, there's greenhouse gases and there's droughts and so on, and these are major problems. Other issues were raised in the 80s and 90s, mostly with respect to the free trade agreement between Canada and the U.S. There was a fear that that agreement could one day open the door to bulk water exports from Canada to the U.S. to satisfy their thirst. If I'm not mistaken, New Democratic members tabled legislation to prevent bulk water exports to the U.S. They spearheaded that fight. Uh, when I came to Parliament, I was interested in the experimental lakes, which at the time came under fish, fisheries and oceans. The experiment, experimental lakes were uh, a, a laboratory, if you will, that was out in nature. There were a large number of lakes that were experiment, uh, the subjects of experimentations in real time out in nature, the largest lab of its kind in the world. And our researchers greatly and concretely contributed to knowledge in many parts of the world including Ontario and Quebec, which have hundreds of waterways, including the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence Seaway. It's thanks to the studies done in the experimental lakes area 
that we were able to get rid of phosphates and detergents or reduce their use. It's thanks to research in the Experimental Lakes area that today we have the Canada-U.S. Acid Rain Treaty and the UN Convention on Mercury. Thanks to researchers in the Experimental Lakes, we've saved billions of dollars that we may otherwise have had to spend on removing nitrogen from our wastewater. There, research served to show that things could be done to deal with uh, algae blooms. So without any intrusion into provincial jurisdiction, research entirely funded by the federal government led to many advances in our understanding of our aquatic eco ecosystems. There are many other examples where the federal government has brought a major contribution to protecting our freshwater without in any way intruding on provincial jurisdiction. For example, Health Canada participates in a federal provincial committee with a mandate to recommend and revise drinking water standards. Those standards are not imposed on the provinces, they're voluntary. But I'd like to point out that Quebec takes the new standard very seriously. Quebec is taking action to change uh, water service uh, pipes in Montreal and other places. And there are a number of other agencies and federal departments that have specific responsibilities around managing water in Canada. And this is always in keeping with lines of jurisdiction. But there's one area where the federal government has exclusive jurisdiction. I'm talking about drinking water in Indigenous communities. The federal government is heavily fo has been heavily focused on this issue since its election in 2015, and with some success in reducing, once and for all, boiled water advisories, long-term advisories. It's interesting to note, Madam Speaker, that no short or long-term boil water advisories have been issued in Quebec. And my motion could shed light on factors that have given rise to such excellent news. It's also important to note that there's another department involved in uh, the matter of drinking water on Indigenous reserves, and that is Public Services and Procurement Canada, because they play a role in approving water treatment facilities in Indigenous communities. So let me talk briefly about the federal role in managing freshwater resources in Canada. The department finances water works, work on uh, water works and sewage treatment. And there's also a subsection on dealing with the climate change and how this impacts this resource. And Health Canada has a, there's also, Environment Canada has a meteorological service. And my colleague uh, mentioned this because uh, she goes past this center every day in her riding. And this center gives the government of Quebec the benefit of its expertise because climate change is causing more and more damage in our ridings, uh, including my own. And there's Natural Resources Canada, which, according to its website, has, and I quote, a team of scientists who provide municipalities and emergency relief teams the tools they need to make decisions. This team gathers data through satellite and radar imagery and produces in real time maps for emergency responders in crisis situations like flooding. I talked about a limited number of 
federal departments and agencies involved in managing our freshwater resources while respecting the primary jurisdiction of the provinces when it comes to freshwater. As I said, there are at least a dozen, if not some 20 departments and agencies that have a role to play. And the purpose of this motion is to better understand their individual roles and their interaction with a view to coming up with a more rational and effective federal freshwater policy and to support other levels of government better. This should not be seen as a Trojan horse motion. The goal is not to intrude in any way on provincial jurisdiction. Water is an issue like no other. It doesn't follow the same rules as other issues that can remain in a silo. Water, by its very nature, requires cooperation among provinces. Think of the Ottawa River, for example, which dumps into the Lac des Deux Montagnes and then into the St. Lawrence uh, Seaway, and it goes uh, further f out to sea. So water requires interregional cooperation. It requires cooperation all across the country in order to ensure our common security and safety and to ensure that everyone is thought of, even people in countries that lack water resources. The EU is made up of sovereign countries. And they have understood how important it is to work together to ensure their water safety and security in this era of climate change. And they've come up with a European framework directive on water. And they, so they have a common policy around their freshwater resources. So the federal government has a role to play in freshwater policy. Given climate change, pollution, urban development, all of these things put our water resources at risk. And the impact is not limited to one geographic location because water flows from one region to another. We need to cooperate among regions and provinces increasingly in order to ensure our common water security. This study will pave the way for the future when it comes to this cooperation the cooper including the cooperation among scientists, whether at the University of Montreal, the University of Alberta, or the University of Quebec in Chicoutimi. Members in this place from all regions of all political stripes should be at the table or at their screen in the current pandemic context. However we communicate, we have to be present and involved like they are in Europe. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? Four. And I, it's coming, it's coming. Central Okanagan, Samilkovin, Nicola. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I certainly appreciate the uh, speech given by the member and for the work that he's done on the Environment Committee in this Parliament, as well as the previous ones, uh, and for his advocacy on freshwater issues. Uh, in his speech tonight, he did talk about a variety of things, and I will confess, Madam Speaker, there are so many facets to freshwater protection uh, that, uh, that occurs in a country as large as Canada. One thing I didn't hear a lot was on First Nations, particularly uh, concerns about treaty rights. I'm from British Columbia. Many treaties have not been yet negotiated. Uh, and so I, I'm just going to ask the member, uh, first of all, does, he talked about provincial, respecting provincial jurisdiction. What about treaty rights? What about First Nations that have, uh, especially in my area, the Okanagan, Madam Speaker, uh, many of the Indian bands, uh, particularly uh, um, uh, the, uh, the Penticton Indian Band and Associate Indian Band, uh, have a very strong connection with the water uh, and protecting salmon. So I'd like to hear what the member has to say in regards to his motion. The Honourable Member for Lac Saint Louis. Thank you, Madam Speaker. That's a good question. I did mention uh, the issue of drinking water in First Nations, and also in the motion, uh, we talk about uh, the different departments that uh, have a role to play in, uh, in water uh, management, if you will, and protection in Canada. And, uh, and one of them uh, on the list is Crown Indigenous Relations. Um, I'm very familiar with the issue, but more in regards to Alberta, because a number of years ago, I piloted a study at the Environment Committee of the impacts of, of, uh, of, the oil, of oil sands development on, um, on, on the watershed in, in the Athabasca. And I remember uh, discussions around Treaty 8 and, and how that factored into uh, protecting the rights of Indigenous people from uh, 
pollution from, from oil sands development. But that's certainly an issue that should be raised at the committee if we undertake this study. Uh, member for Repentigny. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for his speech because fresh water is very important. It's the future of humanity. But does he not recognize that there's a great danger in his motion, a danger of intruding on Quebec's and provincial jurisdictions? Okay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for her question. I thought I had addressed that concern in my speech by saying that we do acknowledge from the outset that water is a provincial resource or a resource that comes under provincial jurisdiction constitutionally. And, but no one can handle everything alone when it comes to water. The federal government has no intention of intruding on provincial jurisdictions when it comes to water. There was never any attempt to expand federal jurisdiction here. But it's a good point to raise if ever the committee were to launch this study, which in my view it's high time for, especially in the context of climate change. Honourable Member for um, Victoria. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I want to thank the member for his speech and his advocacy for fresh water. We urgently need updates to our freshwater policies and legislation. Uh, but we also need to make sure our policies are based on a new nation-to-nation -nation governance paradigm that is consistent with the principles of reconciliation and the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. The member mentioned the tragedy of continued boil water advisories in Indigenous communities, and it's important to note that the Neskagataga First Nation has not had access to clean drinking water for 25 years. They had to be evacuated during a pandemic, and they because they don't have running water and the government is responsible and must act now. But when it comes to this bill and the creation of a Canada water agency, its mandate and functions should be co-developed with Indigenous nations. That work takes time and should start immediately. Does the member agree that the water agency should be co-developed with Indigenous nations, that it should start now and that the committee study should complement but in no way slow down, pause or put the creation of the agency on hold? For Lac Saint Louis. I agree entirely that the study should not get in the way of any initiative that is currently underway. Uh, it's complementary to a whole host of initiatives. Um, I know that, or I, I was told in, in response to a question in the House, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, by the Minister that, that uh, they are consulting First Nations on, on what they would like to see in the agency. And I know that First Nations in the Atlantic have created a water authority, which is a wonderful idea. And I, I hope uh, that the agency will have uh, that kind of uh, constructive relationship with that authority because that might be a model for the future in other First Nations communities.